Hi, I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. This beautiful bandstand obstructing traffic in the very heart of Exeter is officially named the Swayze Pavilion. Down by the river, we find the Swayze Parkway and another more modern bandstand called the Swayze Parkway Pavilion. What's the story with all the Swayze swag in town? It all goes back to Exeter native and town philanthropist Ambrose Swayze. Swayze was born here in 1847, the ninth of ten children. As a boy, he attended the Plains School on Park Street, one of our more dreary schools known for its lack of natural lighting, poor air quality, and no internal plumbing. Swayze was an adequate enough student, but he was really enthralled by everything and anything mechanical. After his short school career, he landed a job at the Exeter Machine Works, where he met another bright, mechanically adept young man named Worcester Warner. Together, they tinkered improvements on the machinery they were making and eventually set out on their own, founding the Warner and Swayze Company based in Cleveland, Ohio, which specialized in telescopes and made improvements to industrial machinery like the turret lathe. I don't really know what that is, but we get a lot of visits from engineers who love to talk about the turret lathe and Ambrose Swayze, so, you know, we had to mention it. The company was profitable. Swayze never forgot his childhood home of Exeter. He and his wife visited here every summer, and since they didn't have any children of their own, his gifts to the town were very generous. He was tired of the rickety old wooden bandstand that was dragged into the center of town for summer performances of the Exeter Brass Band. He discussed the problem with sculptor Daniel Chester French while French was sculpting his likeness. French was also from Exeter, and the two of them decided that a bandstand designed by French's friend, architect Henry Bacon, was just the thing. The three men visited Exeter in 1915 to check out locations, and in August of 1916, the Swayze Pavilion, usually called the bandstand by locals, was dedicated. The band still plays there every July. In 1930, Swayze, now mostly retired from business, spent even more time in Exeter. The trip from the downtown to his house at Fort Rock Farm took him past the town dump on the banks of the Squamscott River. Swayze decided to clean it up and donate the land to the town. Work began that fall, and in November of 1931, the Exeter Shore Parkway was dedicated and immediately renamed Swayze Parkway by the grateful citizens of Exeter. Today, this beautiful slice of land is used for walking, jogging, town concerts, our farmer's market, and it's a favorite place for wedding and prom pictures. All thanks to Ambrose Swayze. If you get a chance, climb up onto the downtown bandstand and admire the mosaic work on the ceiling and the plaque embedded in the center of the floor. The compass bearings and zodiac signs are a tribute to a man who developed telescope technology and has both an asteroid and a crater on the moon named for him. For more information about Ambrose Swayze, or to talk to us about the turret lathe, visit our headquarters at 47 Front Street in Exeter or through our website at www.exeterhistory.org.